The following is a Pod Beard production. EST 2016. This is interviews, music reviews, opinions, and more. This is this is the Hotter Show. What is up, everybody? We are Roland Audio here today on episode 261 of the Hotter Show. I hope you guys are doing absolutely fantastic. Thanks so very much for tuning in and clicking that play button. On today's episode of the podcast, we have a kick-ass episode for you here today as we try to every single week right here on the Hotter Show on Podbeard Network. I'm sitting down with my boy Chris from Dragged as we are uh, kind of doing a little bit of a, a dissection of his new EP from his band Dragged entitled The EP. So it's Dragged The EP. The EP, son. Not just a EP or this EP. It is The EP. And it is a, a four-song banger. And, of course, uh, with these showcase episodes, usually it's just me talking about what I, a little bit about the band and who's in the band and whatnot. And then I play you guys the songs, which we are still, of course, doing today. And then I kind of talk about a little bit about what I like about the songs. Usually I say, I like this riff here. Oh, and I really like this riff here. Oh, and, the, and this, this, is, this is badass here. Um, so instead of doing that, we have guest commentary from Chris. So it is... Uh, it's really fun, and I hope that you guys enjoyed as much as I did. There was a, a, a little bit of audio issue there, so I do apologize if uh, it's not quite as crisp as it normally is when I do these episodes here. For some reason, anytime Chris and I get together to do an episode over, over the internet, I, I have weird audio issues, which I never have normally. So Chris and I have made a pact that from now on, just we're just going to get together in person, especially now that the world's kind of starting to tell a little bit with seeing people i would love to get together with chris and have a beer and do an episode with him again sometime maybe for the next uh ep release or something like that you're gonna hear a little bit about that as well as how dragged came to be and then of course like i said we're gonna play all the four songs for you and then he's gonna kind of give us a little bit of a rundown on each track it's gonna be a great time cannot wait for you guys to hear this. But before we do, of course, I want to thank everybody for their support on last week's episode of the podcast. The Q&A, the Ask Hot or Anything, was uh, well received. That was a lot of fun. Um, I will definitely be doing that again in that kind of a, you know, Ask Hot or Anything format. Because that was uh, that was fun. There were some really fun questions. Uh, someone messaged me and made fun of me for the fact that you know you always like spend so much time on certain questions, and then other questions you spend like five minutes on because you like, run out of time. So <laughs> I always I always get a kick out of myself whenever I do that. And of course, because I did it so late, which also uh, quick behind the scenes, I'm doing this as well very late. Uh, it is it's eleven o'clock right now on Wednesday, uh, so. In like literally four hours, this episode will be live for you guys. To, not four hours, in like seven, eight hours, this episode will be live for you guys to hear. So uh, it was fun though. Chris was able to make it happen for me, and we were able to get it done tonight. And uh, I hope that you guys do enjoy it. It's kind of fun doing it this like last minute. It's like it's raw. It's as live as it can pretty much get for a podcast. So we're gonna have some fun here. And I of course uh, also want to give a quick shout out. To a brand new sponsor here on the Harder Show. Brand new sponsor, my man Kale Riddick. Kale Riddick Painting, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you're in the Prince Edward County, um, Quinty area, and you need some painting, then hit up my boy Kale. You're going to hear a full ad on next week's episode of the show. It is starting in September. My little uh, kind of uh, fun sponsorship deal with Kale. I cannot thank Kale enough for, you know, not only trusting me that. This is going to be a worthy investment for him, but also just being a great guy and also a master painter, man. Check out the Facebook. It's Kale Riddick Painting. Kale is with a C, C A E L. Kale Riddick, R E D D I C K, painting. And you'll see, man. He like did like some restorations work on a church, as well as some outdoor stuff for some other people as well that he has up there. And uh, it looks fantastic. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. That's going to be really fun and exciting. I'm uh, very, very, very uh, thankful to Kale for taking the chance on your boy here. And if you are interested in advertising with The Harder Show, be sure to hit me up either on uh, the Facebook or the Instagram at The Harder Show or, of course, thehardershow at gmail.com. I am still running uh, my little special where you get two months of advertising here on the show for $20, which is uh, 
you know, that's that's not even a trip to McDonald's, but it uh, helped your boy out big time. Very much big time. $20 for you may not seem like a lot for your boy with the podcast. That's a lot of freaking money. So something to think about. If you are uh, interested, hit me up. Let me know. Would love to chat with you about that. Just like I'm ready to jump in and love to chat about this showcase here today on the show with my boy Chris doing some kind of guest commentary hanging out with me while we dive into his EP, the EP from Dragged. Let's get into it. All right, gang. Very excited because we are here with my man Chris Osuch from Dragged, the main man behind Dragged. We're going to do a little uh, Harder Show Music showcase here on the EP, which is, of course, Drag's latest release. And this is cool because usually I do these alone and I kind of talk a little bit about the band and kind of a little bit of background, who's in the band. And then also, of course, as you guys know, I talk about the songs. But we're having guest commentary and the words directly from someone from the band, and in this case, the band. So, Chris, what's up, brother? How you doing? I'm good, man. How's it going? Oh, Fucking... just fantastic, buddy. It's good to talk to you. Yeah, real nice to be back. Always a, always a, always a fun time coming on here. You're, you're like my, my, like, at this point, you've got to be in the top at least 10 of most reoccurring guests at this point. <laughs> yeah, I think this is, what, fourth time now? I think this is yeah. the fourth, yeah, because you were, wait. It was no, Locker was Box, fifth? King... I don't know. It was no. Locker Box, Kingdra. Yeah. Um, Solo. And we did that conspiracy theory yes. one. And, and then, then now, now this, this is four. Four. Okay. four. Okay. So you're you're pro- you're definitely top ten, I would say. I'd be curious. To, I'm going to have to crunch the math, math on that later because I would be really <laughs> curious to see. <laughs> hey, man, I'll come on as long as you keep fucking having me. Sick. We'll make you the most reoccurring guest soon enough. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but you've, you've been busy as hell since the last time we talked because when we talked back in uh, uh, May – was it May? Yeah, it was May. Somewhere yeah, in May, I think. May. Whenever I don't know, conspiracy theory was May, I think. You have uh, written a whole crap load of music. You sure. were writing music at the time, but you hadn't dropped yeah. anything yet. And you kind of sort of hyped it up a little bit. So I was really excited to see you kind of finally drop the EP. Uh, was it about, about a, a month ago now or a few weeks? Uh, Two weeks, I think. Two, two weeks? Okay, weeks, cool. Like is it, has it really only been two? Wow. Time is so weird right now, man. Like I feel like it was yeah, like a no. month ago, and it's not. I uh, yeah, it really pissed me off. So for anybody who doesn't know who's listening, um, so I was really hyping up dropping the EP, and originally like this shit was gonna come out in like fucking late April, early May, um, but I had a bunch of circumstances kind of happen that really fucked me over. So the first was obviously COVID. Uh, shut down our jam space, so I had nowhere to record uh, vocals for the last like two songs I had to do vocals for. Um, so, well, half the EP is only fucking four songs. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so I had nowhere to do vocals, which fucked me over because like I live in an apartment, I can't try vocals here. Um, so it was that mixed with uh, I couldn't. Uh, I had a little bit of time there where. The guy who was programming the drums for me on the EP, that was the literal only thing I didn't do on this EP was program the drums because I'm a fucking idiot when it comes to that stuff. I can't do it. Um, anyway, the guy who, Jake Morningstar from A Particle Apart, fantastic drummer, amazing guy. I loved working with him. He's such a good dude. But uh, but he's a super busy guy too. And he was doing this basically to help me out. Like He didn't care about credit. He didn't ask me for a payment or anything. Like He was just doing it. Uh, so he got super busy and then he kind of got behind on doing some of the stuff. I won't either. It got to the point where I kind of just felt a little bit defeated and, uh, I, I kind of slacked on, on finishing when it came to mixing and mastering the tracks, even once they were done. Cause I just, uh, I don't know, like I had so many setbacks. It got to a point where I was just like, do I even fucking want to put this out anymore? Like, sure. Yeah. Yeah. I can get that. Well, and that's the thing is like, it was like a lot of, um, not stop and start, but like you're saying, like, and that's the thing when you're the only person doing yeah. majority of it. <laughs> I was it, gonna say you would it, know better than anybody. Well, in the county. <laughs> I got no one to blame it myself if I if something happens, yeah. but like, it, it can be frustrating for sure when there's something yeah. that you can't do. Yeah, exactly. Or something comes up, and you know, you also had issues with once the EP was done. 
and you went to go release it, you had right, issues too yeah. with the what happened with that? <laughs> yeah, so that was a whole other headache I completely forgot about. Uh, yeah, so I went to go put up because originally I put up uh, UL or Unlike uh, with Jacob from Beguiler. Uh, I put that as the single, so it did go up on Spotify. And uh, I, I won't lie, when it came to what I use for distribution on, on streaming platforms, which is DistroKid, um, I didn't know there was a way to kind of merge a single you had out with a release oh, okay. that you're putting out. So what I did is I just pulled the I just pulled the single off the stores, and then I was like, okay, I'll just re-upload it with the EP. But then when I went to go do that, what happened was uh, DistroKid came back to me and they said, look, the stores like Apple Music and Spotify and that and even Google Play, they will not let you re-release a song you've already released, even if it's your song. It doesn't fucking matter. They won't let you re-release it if it has the same name and they even look at like the bit and sample rate even. So that really fucked me over because I was like, shit, okay, so now I have to write a whole other song because I only have three songs now to put on the EP. So I wrote an entire other song. And then I found a way around it to get UL onto the EP by basically I just put that huge intro into the song and then, uh, yeah, and then changed the name <laughs> and that fucking did it. <laughs> so. Well, that was it. Like, because for me, and you know, before we jump into the actual EP, I do want to ask a couple questions about kind of how this all started for you with it. But like, um, for me, when I sat down and listened to the full EP, you know, UL, I was like, oh, like, where's Unlike? I was like, I, th- that's that's my still, that's my favorite song. I just, I, I don't know, I'm just, it's, a, it's right. a banger. They're all bangers, but that's that's my track. <laughs> I think it, I think it's got, a, one reason is because Jacob's on it. Because I just, I yeah, fucking yeah, love yeah. Jacob's voice. Yeah, um, his part in that's fucking dope. Oh, dude, sure. it's awesome. Two, two of the heaviest hitters in the fucking uh, Durham, Ontario music metal scene, man. Together yeah, on one track. To, uh, yeah, I would definitely love to do a couple more tracks with Jacob if the uh, opportunity comes up. I would love to either go on a Beguiler track or have him on another drag track or whatever. You hear, you hear Jacob? Are you listening? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so that's funny, Jacob. Still, still to this day, one of the one of the like like any. It's like when I met you. Like I was like, oh, like this dude's not screaming at me. Like he's so like. Like, like, <laughs> polite, and well spoken, and everything, and like, yeah. except with Jacob, he's just like, oh, hello. He's, he's very quiet. I'm like, well, oh, what? Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. But um, when I sat down and listened to the EP, I was like, what is this this intro? And like, it's cool, but like, I was like, what? Like, I wonder why he added that. So I was, I was, cu- I was going to ask you about that. So that's interesting that you had to kind of, yeah, that was, <laughs> that was basically just so I could get, I'm like, onto the EP. And, so, and then obviously ch- changing the name as well, or was that just you? No, I had to change the name too. I yeah. wouldn't let me use the same name. So <laughs> that's so I weird because basically... bands do. I see bands do that though. Yeah, I don't know. I don't understand how it works. It's the same thing with like I, uh, I, I. One of my buddies brought up to me. He's like, "Well, what the fuck? Like, if you can't do that, how do you have bands like, like big bands? Obviously, like, how do you have them put out an album and then put out like a greatest hits with all of those songs? Yeah, which it? is that? That's bullshit. That, that's yeah, so." so I don't know. It was stupid. I even tried emailing DistroKid about it, and they basically told me to go fuck myself. Like, there's nothing you can do. Nice. So good on them, eh? <laughs> so I was like, all right. I guess uh, this is how I'm gonna have to go about it then. Whatever you got it out, and that's the main thing. And it is yeah, uh, finally. It's a kick-ass shit. EP, man. And I mean, I know that you're. I, I say this a lot about you. You're definitely one of the busiest cats as far as with your music writing and constantly. You know, oh, let's check out this new riff. Oh, check out this new song and. Oh, I got the sick vocal part. Always writing. Always writing. Like that fucking EP just came out. I already have two songs done for the next one. And I have another track right now that I'm kind of collabing on with Keegan, actually. (laughs) I don't know what that's going to be, though. I don't know if that's going to be because it really doesn't fit the drag aesthetic whatsoever. So I don't know if that's going to be released under drag or if I might just put it out like in my own name. Okay. Well, it's interesting Uh, on that note. With you, and this is something you and I talk about privately all, more than once, where, like, you know, you have so many different ty- – like, with your guitar playing, like, you, you'll you write these brutal heavy riffs that, like, that's drag. That's, yeah. you know, very uh, – heavy side of things. But then, like, you'll have, like, you know, a very, like, southern metal kind of 
um, how how would you describe it? Like a very yeah, I don't know. Southern, Southern hardcore is my yeah. shit, man. I love I love every time I die. May lean in the sons of disaster. All those kinds of bands. I love that shit so much. And um, like to me, that's like dragged south. You know, that's like <laughs> yeah. that's like that's dragged south. You know, yeah, so maybe really, you could have like like dragged I really rock or write something. An EP and just yeah, I call it dragged. You, south. you totally should. I think I said that <laughs> on a post or something. I was like, yo, dragged yeah. south is hard. Like just <laughs> just. No yeah, EP not a, not name, idea. just dragged south, dot, 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 dot. And just like, <laughs> you can have like a, I don't know, what's like a southern thing? Like a, I don't know, like, like a desert, like so, that's like the hand. I'm like, yeah, mm, that'd be cool. Yeah, it's not a bad idea actually at all. I, really I don't know, I'll think about it. Like I said, I actually have, <laughs> uh, I have two songs pretty much fucking done for, I think I just have to do vocals and bass on them. But uh, two songs pretty much done for the next uh, release i'm gonna do for drags it's gonna be i don't even really want to say an ep more like a demo like it's really only gonna be three tracks um but it's a bit of a different style like it's still super heavy and shit but it's uh it has a lot more new metal and kind of genty influence in it than okay just, uh the straight kind of hardcore riffs that dragged more so was Okay, well, I mean, it's cool, and I mean, you know, like when I was first introduced to you, one of the things that we kind of, um, I guess you could say, bonded over was our love of new metal and like oh, bands like Limb Biscuit and stuff <laughs> like that. Like, yeah. we both love Limb Biscuit, and it's not even a yeah. joke. Like, it's like I genuinely <laughs> no. love Limb Biscuit. Anybody, Fred is anybody incredible. who follows me on any social media yeah. <laughs> is very well aware of how much I love Limb Biscuit, <laughs> which is funny. But like, so. With all of that, then also the other projects that you were doing and have done and are doing or what have you, how did the whole thing with drag kind of like, when did you kind of realize like, hey, like, I want to do this myself. I want to just do something that's my own thing. I want to be, just get it out there. So basically what happened, I mean, uh, again, anybody who has me on social media or anybody who's kind of followed me, I don't want to say it like this because it just sounds weird. To say like who's followed my career? You followed like, my I'm career. Not, I'm bro. not. I'm not a professional. <laughs> I know what you're saying. So it just sounds stupid. But anyway, um, yeah. Anybody who's followed me, anyway, you know all the projects I've been in, whether it be Lockerbox, Kingdra, North Shore, Ventura, way back even. Um, I loved all of those projects a lot, um, but it just none of them. Lockerbox was close, really close. Mm. Uh, just none of them kind of hit that sound I really fucking wanted to do. And that was pretty much what Dragged is. A little bit sloppier because I'm doing everything. But <laughs> um, yeah, just that. I basically said to myself, I was like, I want to make a record that people are just going to fucking murder each other to in a pit. Like just absolutely kill each other to. And sure enough, I've had that feedback from like four or five people. They're like, dude, if you play this live, like it'd be brutal. Holy shit. Like <laughs> people are going to fucking kill each other, which is great. That's entirely what I intended. That's what you want. So, you want death in front of you <laughs> yeah. as you're <laughs> screaming at people. Um, but yeah, and then how it kind of started. So like I said, uh, you know, those bands were great and those projects were awesome. And I had always had a great time doing them. Uh, they just weren't that sound. They just weren't something I, I always say like dumb heavy. You know, that's what I wanted. I wanted dumb heavy shit like caveman riffs. You know, dude, and, I told you. Uh, yeah, I got you. I got you. So that's what I was like. <laughs> Fuck it. You know what? I'm gonna take a shot at doing this myself. And you know what? If it sucks, then I just won't ever even put it out, and no one has to know. Um, and I did it all really quickly. To be honest with you, I. Uh, like a year ago when I started writing this EP, I had no fucking gear at all. I had uh, a shitty fucking Acer laptop from like 2010. Can uh, relate. I, <laughs> I was using my uh, I was using my live like PA mixer. It was the most guy I've ever seen in your life. So basically what I was doing is I was running the Acer laptop into the mixer as an interface and then running my guitar through that. And then the speakers, I didn't have studio monitors. So I was using my actual stereo, like record player speakers. And I had to have like three different fucking converters to connect everything. It was a nightmare. <laughs> but, uh, and honestly too, when I started that like a year ago, uh, when I bought that first seven string, it was a Jack, it was a, just a fucking Jackson dinky. Um, 
I hadn't picked up a guitar in probably like 10 years, to be honest. Um, and I was just like, you know what? I, I kind of miss playing guitar. I kind of want to see if I can write shit like that. It's not like it's really hard. Like It's not super complicated shit. Um, so yeah, and then I just I slowly started buying gear and kind of chipping away at it. To be honest, I wrote this EP probably six times and then deleted it and started over. Because um, every time, by the time I would finish the last song, I was like, I can play better than that now. Yeah, so I get that. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to. De- I don't want to use it. Um. So yeah, and then I just kept chipping away, chipping away, and uh, I probably had the guitar and the songs actually written fully by. Probably like February, I guess. Yeah, because so I I remember the first, and this is kind of behind the scenes, I guess a little bit, but like I can remember I was honored to be one of the first people that you were like, hey, so riff, <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> yeah. what the fuck is this? Like, yo, who like who who are you playing with? And you were like, uh, it's me, and I was like, no, like I was blown away. I was like, what? <laughs> Yeah, it's not bad for a dude who hasn't touched a guitar in ten years. That's for sure. For um, sure, and like you're, you're, and you're very modest with your like. Uh, what's the most light word? Yeah, you're very like you know, eh, you know, I guess they're okay. But like, I can tell you right now, you've got the you got the fucking ribs, man. Like, it's <laughs> and and the the EP. This is just like cracking the surface, because again, yeah. I've had the pleasure of being witness to a couple uh, little clips I've been sent, and uh, let me tell you, folks, shit's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the next one's going to be uh, way better. I'll say that. <laughs> way, way better. I, uh, I I was able to start writing way more. I don't want to necessarily say compli- more complicated riffs. They're just, uh, they're just different. They're more... Uh, okay, so I'm a really big fan with when... Like, if, if you can shred and sweep and all that stuff, that's cool, man. Like, I respect the shit out of how much dedication that takes and practice. Um, but I find it way more... Um, impressive when someone can take like a basic kind of simple riff but still make it really memorable yeah. and catchy and that's kind of what drew me to this style like with drag right it's like you know listening to bands like Acacia Strain or Kublai Khan very much that style it's like the riffs aren't hard at all but, it's memorable. but they're just catchy they're bouncy like they yeah. you know what I mean they stick with you still even though they're really not complicated dude like for me, being a, uh, you know, like when I was in high school and I first heard like Alice in Chains, a lot of the yeah. same thing where it's like, you know, first time I ever heard Man of the Box, I'm like, yo, what? And like, that's yeah. this, this one. Such note, a good riff. You know? Classic. And like, a- Angry Chair by Alice in Chains, that's yeah. three notes. Yeah. And it's the three most. Even, I mean, basic. if you want to get more, yeah, if you want to get more modern too, like, check my brain. Yes. Fucking yeah, yeah, yeah. One yeah. I was bent. just about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Literally, one note bent. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just, that's it. That, that's yeah. that's the whole and then there's another song on uh, on that same record Black Is Way to Blue um, yeah. for all my Alice yeah, Chains fans great out there song. Um, I fucking love Alice Chains and also oh fuck yeah dude and also um, on that record uh, Phantom Limb which is yeah. literally that's it but yeah. like it hit me too I was like yo what like there's it, it, there is an art form to you know Having a, especially like a like a, like a, a single string like few yeah. note riff, like for sure. Couple notes, that's it. If you can make one of those, make it bounce, make it memorable, make people want to rip each other's faces off to it. That that's a gift. You know what I'm saying? That's what I mean. and that's and that's what I, I I appreciate that a lot. Um, you know the feedback I've gotten about the EP. It's you know, I, 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 again, like you said, I'm, I'm very modest about my shit. I, uh, you know, I posted a thing the other day. It was like, I, I think on Spotify, I hit like 35 monthly listeners for drag or something. And I was just like, holy shit. Like, I thought two people were going to fucking listen to this. Like, that's awesome. And like, I get it. 35 is fuck all. Like, that's literally nothing, basically. But to me, man, like, that's awesome. I, when you think no 30, one's going to listen to it, that's awesome. Well, the fact yeah. 35 people are going to take the time to even listen to it, like, yeah. that, that means the wor- fucking world to me. Like, if, uh, yeah, if somebody will take the time out of their day to listen to it, like, awesome. That's I'm gonna it, keep man. Doing it. For sure. And I, and I can absolutely relate to that as well, because same thing with me. You know, it's, if, uh, if I, like, I still remember when I hit my first 100 downloads in a week, I was like, 
Well, yeah. well, obviously that's that's. But you also got to keep in mind, I was doing this for almost four years before I hit that. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, it's like, sure. like when I hit my first ten downloads in a week. Oh, mm-hmm. oh my god! Oh, uh, when I hit my first, you know, hundred downloads in a month. Oh, uh, oh, this is when I had a, a, a week where I had uh, a, a thousand downloads, which that was a fluke. That was never gonna happen again. But like, I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> like, I had like a mental <laughs> yeah, breakdown awesome. and called my friend and he's like dude are you like why are you mad i'm like because i don't fucking know what i did like it's like, <laughs> what do you do but but um so i can absolutely relate on that scale as well like where it's just like oh like i didn't think anyone was gonna actually care about this so yeah no i didn't think cool. anybody was gonna give a flying fuck about the drag dp to be honest i thought it was gonna be like <laughs> me putting it out and be like here you go guys and everyone's gonna be like this is fucking garbage what the hell is this? <laughs> well, yeah you're you share <laughs> memes all the time and stuff of like you know uh fuck, i can't remember anything off the top of my head right now it's been a long day but so like where it's like you know your riffs like uh something like your riffs being trash or whatever or like you know yeah, you're on a date with a girl yeah. and it's like i like guys who write good riffs check please like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Just, like i, mean, I yeah. always but like it, it, it's i think it's good to be modest and be able to kind of t- t- take the piss out of yourself a little bit i guess but you know you've got it and and definitely with the e with the ep not just it's literally the ep is called drag the ep so for those of you yeah, who I are why I, went. I don't know why i did that i didn't want to just have it like be a self title like i didn't want it to be like dragged dragged like i don't know <laughs> that's yeah that would be a little much it's like come on man seriously like what's going on but to have dragged the ep i th- i don't know i think that's cool that's a statement it's like this is the ep okay this is not yeah. just an ep this is the ep but we're gonna jump into it right now here we're gonna hear all four songs and uh, you guys are definitely going to enjoy it. It is a, it is a kick-ass EP. Um, I'll run through the track listing real quick here. Um, be sure to uh, fill in the blanks if I, if I miss anything, <laughs> Chris. Um, of course, the first song, we have a UL, which was Unlike, which Chris told you guys to story a little bit before. And that does feature Jacob uh, from, uh, from Beguiler, who we've had on the show a few times. Uh, we have Lancoy. And long, and then deplete the deadbeat, and that features. Um, I, I for some reason I'm not sure on my Spotify, but uh, that uh, song features, Nick Young. That's what it was. Nick Young, yes. of all. Oh, another really badass feature on that one for sure. Um, so what we're gonna do, guys? We're gonna play you the songs, take a quick commercial break, and then when we come back with Chris from Dragged, he's gonna kind of give us a brief run through of each single song when we come back on this Hodgson Music Showcase of the EP Drag. But right now, crank it up. We're going to jump into the first song, UL, right here on the Hodgson Show with Drag. What? Who? Are they still there? Yes. The people? Oh, no. <laughs> were they shot? Yes, man, too. Uh, were they shot? Yes. They were shot? Yes. We're going to see what I'm saying. I'm going to see what I'm saying. What happened? Hey.
you listen to the harder show right now are you in a band maybe you're a business owner of some kind and performer maybe a pro wrestler an event promoter an athlete or maybe you're just an everyday person who needs some photo editing done you need a great graphic design guy and have i ever got the hookup for you my man and close personal friend mr jason reese from jaybird digital arts whether you need logos t-shirts stickers tickets business cards banners menu brochures flyers posters facebook banner videos door hangers photo editing and restoration, print ads, lyric video editing, signs, notepads, window clings, letterhead, bookmarks, programs, magnets, greeting cards, calendars, rack cards, invitations, envelopes, pens. Jason will work with you to develop a style that is unique to you and that tells everybody just how special your business, event, or you personally are, and you will stand out from the crowd. On top of the fact that he does offer free delivery between Coburg, Ontario and Kingston, Ontario. Message him today, right now, for a free quote. That's right, a free quote. Tell him about your idea. You got something outside the box, he will make it happen. With great rates and service, you cannot go wrong. I've used Jason literally for everything over the past three and a half years, and I cannot say enough good things about the man himself and his work. So contact him today on the web at jburgdigitalarts.com or on social media under jburgdigitalarts. That's J-A-Y-B-I-R-D digitalarts.com. You can also email him at jbird.digital.arts at gmail.com. And always keep in mind that his business is successful when your business looks good. All right, guys, we're back here with Chris from Dragged, and you just heard the brand new EP from Dragged, the EP, in its entirety, all four badass songs. So, usually what I would do here is I would pick my three favorites and then basically say what I like about them, blah, blah, blah. But we have something way better because we are, of course, have Chris with us here. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to say the song. And Chris, I want you to kind of give me a little uh, little backstory on it. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds good to me. Beauty. Man. All right. So, of course, the first track, uh, UL or Unlike, I do have one question that yeah. I really want to ask because I have no idea and I'm really curious. What the hell is that intro from? 
What what okay. is it? Like you got to run that me through this. Yeah, yeah, no worries. So that intro uh, is actually. I always have a hard time remembering their name because it's some like long Greek name. Um, but it was so. What it was is it's a nine one one call uh, back in the early nineties. These two brothers, their father was a uh, a very big movie producer in Hollywood, mm. uh, and the story goes that uh, it was rumored that the father had like really abused the two sons and uh, potentially like molested them and stuff. And it's just awful. So basically what that 911 call is, is these two brothers, I guess they, you know, one night had enough. Uh, They actually killed their two parents. Uh, They killed the dad for doing it. And then the mom, obviously for never doing anything about it. Um, So they killed their, their parents and they, that's them calling 911 to try and stage. Like they came home and found them dead. Like it was a home invasion. Oh, Okay. Yeah, that's intense shit. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yeah. how does that tie into unlike, or is it just like a? So kind of a... it, uh, I mean, it does kind of tie in, right? Because unlike, I mean, you know, it's you know, unlike, you don't want, you know, that's all shit you don't want to happen. <laughs> oh, sure, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's, uh, you don't want no, actually... to kill your parents, but like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it ended up tying in pretty all right. I. Uh, Oh, for sure. I won't lie. It was, it was completely random, uh, to be honest. I, it's a good idea, though. It was. I, it hooked I, me. I, I was like, oh, what the fuck? Like, what? Yeah. So I uh, like I'm always a fan of like intros on albums and stuff like that. And uh, like I said, too, right, I needed to I needed to change the actual length of the song for it to go up on the stores. Mm-hmm. So uh, I just started hunting around for like, yeah, uh, 911 calls or like cre- I started looking at first at like just creepy shit. Or something like that. Uh, and I stumbled across that one and I was like, that's pretty fucked up. So I guess I'm going to use that one. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty fucked up. Let's go with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So with um, with Unlike, like I know that obviously, as we mentioned, Jacob's on that track with you. So how did that work out with him? Did you, you just basically reach out to him and said, hey, I got this track? Or did you reach out to him before you had the track and said, hey, I want to work with you on something? Uh, so basically with him, uh, I had reached out to him saying, Hey, I'm writing this right now. Um, I'll shoot you the vocals that I have done. And basically what we'll do is the way I put it to him was basically like, Hey, I'm going to send you the fully done track, like with my vocals on it. And then I'm going to send you one that has no vocals on it. And just honestly, wherever you want to do vocals, go for it wherever you think you would fit nice and uh and stuff like that go for it and then that was just the spot he happened to choose mm-hmm. and obviously killed it because his feature on that's awesome oh for sure and i mean i mean like like you know you also killed him because there's moments where i'm like i'm listening to it and i'm like oh like i, th- I think that's jacob with him and then come to find out no jacob comes a little bit later that's just you basically kind of I guess in in a way harmonizing with yourself, but it's like holy shit! Yeah. Like, it's... yeah, lo- yeah, it's all me except for uh, I think it's after like the first two lines or whatever, mm-hmm. and then uh, towards the end too. Like when it's Jacob, it's literally just Jacob, and that's it. Yeah, um, all the other parts were all me. So, well, that's badass. And so, what what made you decide that Unlike was going to be the first song you were going to release? Was it just because it was like, was it one of the first songs you you finished that you were really happy with, or was there another reason as to why? Uh, it was actually, honestly, just the one I liked the most out of the four of them. I uh, I usually try and I usually try and do it that way, where I'll I'll finish all of them and then be like, hey, what's the best one? Which one should be the first single there? And that's pretty much what happened with Unlock. Like all. Although Spotify numbers now, uh, actually, N Long is the one that has the most plays off that EP. So mm-hmm. maybe I should have went with that one, but yeah, whatever. It is <laughs> oh, well, whatever. It's 2020. <laughs> exactly. It is what it is. Yeah, High Tides 2020. Get it? Uh, um, <laughs> funny. But yeah, I know. So I, uh, yeah, I wasn't. I think that I think that one was like the second. I think that was the second track I wrote. Okay. Um, but some of those riffs, uh, some of the riffs that are in that track, though, are like some of the first ones I wrote, though. Because it's very like heavy. First... It's very straight to the point. No nonsense. Very, you know, the second you hear it, like this is going to be a heavy track. 
Yeah, <laughs> for sure. I'm actually uh, so funny enough in that in that EP. I'm only in drop A. Really? Like seven. I would have I yeah, thought you were in, lower, uh, but that's no. I'm only in drop A on that. That's all you that, need, uh, though. I I have that. T- I'm only in drop A. It's like fuck, <laughs> man. That's all you need. You know, you don't need to go any. Listen, I'm just I'm saying this as a PSA to all bands out there. Stop. <laughs> like just I, I I had a cat the other day message me on my guitar page asking if there was a way. <laughs> That he could tune his guitar, a standard scale guitar, you'll get a kick out of this, to a full, like, octave down. Yeah, so to E. Yeah. Like, but like, then drop D. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, you could, but why? And he's like, tongue dude, tongue. think of how fucking heavy. And I'm like, I said, I'm sorry, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Pick up a bass. Have you ever heard? Have you ever heard Black Tongue? That's the tuning they use. Are you serious? That's real. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Black Tongue is pretty fucking Jesus. Dirty, though, I lie, but, Why? Uh, yeah, like yeah, I just sure, don't. I'm pretty sure they're a full. They're okay. either a full okay. octave down or a full octave down, and then D. I can't remember which one it is, but it's one of those two. What's the band? Black. Tongue. Black Tongue. Great band. I mean, they're dirty. Okay. Like if you I mean, like, you know, you like the caveman riffs out of drag. Like Block Tongue's pretty much all just caveman riffs. So, shit. Okay, I'm gonna, I got these fuckers pulled up for later. I'm gonna. Uh... Really? That's. I was making a joke. Like I, I, I thought it was a funny thing. <laughs> no, it's a real. So thing, that though. must have been where he got it from. Then okay, <laughs> probably. Yeah. Okay, very good. Well, so it's cool to hear that you, you play an A because I um. I, I play okay. So funny enough, before <laughs> I was gonna say to you before you started going off about that. So I'm in drop A for that, but actually the new uh, the new songs I'm writing for the next release for Drive is actually drop G. Oh, no. See, that's at least like okay, like you know, but like I, just, I don't know. It's funny. Though, I just so- don't. I never. I, I, like don't get me wrong. Like I used to have my baritone. You know, I love yeah, lower yeah. tunings and stuff like that. But just. Drop G, like I just, uh, I, don't know. I guess it's because I'm not, <laughs> be I'm honest, not as into it, right? Like to be honest, this will probably be the, this will probably be the only release I go that low because I'll, I'll be straight up. I'm having a, a bit of a hard time at times writing in that tuning just because it's yeah. so. Fucking How much can low. you do, like when you're that? Because you don't, even with a, a seven string baritone scale guitar, you're like you're not gonna have any like clarity in your notes. Like you're gonna have to have yeah. your your mids cranked up just to get any kind of clarity like uh, yeah I i'm know, uh, just... like i said i'm i'm having a hard time uh yeah. writing in that tuning a little bit so this will probably be the only release i do that on <laughs> that's um, i mean it's cool like don't get me wrong I mean, dudes, you know, but... dudes can fucking slay in that tuning i okay. i just personally am having a hard time with it so i'll probably go back up to a after this it's just i've already done the two tracks and drop g so i'm like i might as well do the fucking last yeah. one in g for sure. I mean, and it's cool. You know, I'm 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 not hating on anybody who plays in drop G. You know, but uh, I just I don't know for whatever reason I'm always just like, man, seriously, like, come on, goddamn. The uh, the southern kind of stuff I'm writing though, that's only drop D. That see, that's cool. I think that's cool. That's a statement. Like, I'm gonna play in <laughs> drop D. What's up? Like, just <laughs> like nowadays for someone to play in drop D is like that's like unheard of yeah like and like, oh, that's lamb of god they're playing and drop yeah. d and now now i think they've tuned down to ha- a half step now the, the last couple records but like people don't play in that tuning anymore like I, I i never played fucking standard or drop d ever it's so rare you yeah, know yeah. so it's just kind of funny to hear that but uh definitely excited about that but um jumping back to the ep here um so obviously ul badass and for the record guys i always have like a Kind of like a, a song that I picked that's kind of like my pick off the EP. It, it's got to be UL because I, I fucking, I just, I love it. Second I heard, I think it's just because I have a little bit of a, there's a little bit of like a sentimental thing there for me because I was like, Chris, my buddy. So like, when he's like, yo, check out this song. And like the first note, I was like, fuck yeah. I was telling, <laughs> I was telling Chris uh, off air before we started like jokingly, obviously, but it's like, you know, when it's like, oh man, check it out. When, like, when it's your buddy. And it's like, man, I really hope I like this because if I <laughs> yeah. don't, it's going to suck because it's, that doesn't necessarily mean it's bad. It's just like – and I hate lying to people. So it's yeah. like anytime a friend of mine that, – like that's the thing with being friends with musicians. It's like, hey, when you got my new song, oh, this sucks. 
Uh, yeah, man, it's really good because I'm a bad liar. I can't lie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, luckily, I don't have that problem because, you know, uh, all my, my music friends are very talented. <laughs> that, that was kind of the other reason, too, I went for uh, UL being the single and even the first song on the, on the EP because I feel like when that riff starts, that just dun, yeah, dun, 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 you just, you already know what the entire record is about right That's there. That's it. Done. <laughs> like, first, yeah. first two notes. Done. Just, dun, yeah. dun, dun, I guess three, technically four or whatever. Anyway. Um, yeah. So the second track on the EP, Lankoy. Run me through Lankoy. What's, uh, what's to do with that? Okay. So, uh, Lankoy is a bit dark. Uh, I'm going to say this. I'm gonna, <laughs> that, that's an yeah. understatement of the year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna preface this by saying like, really, actually, this this kind of goes in 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 tune with the entire EP is, uh, again, like anybody who's followed me and stuff like that, pretty much everything I've been in has been kind of metal core and stuff mm-hmm. like that, and you know, I never, I, I've always been a huge fan of like beatdown and deathcore and all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. I've just I never had the chance to write like that, even lyrically. Uh, so I really used the EP as an excuse to be like, you know what? I'm just going to write some really fucking dark lyrics because I just, I haven't before. So I kind of want to, um, Lankoy is a perfect example of that. Uh, you know, lead's a nice color on you. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's a hard, that's a hard line. I'm like, yo, what? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I saw you upload a picture with that the other day and I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah lead's a nice color on you i was gonna call the actual song that but i was like ah just i'll just call it land Coy. it's fine um so that actually i'm just trying to think of how i want to word this because i don't know who's gonna end up listening to this so it's about a person i used to work with actually okay uh just this absolute miserable fucking bitch like you know everybody knows this person at their work you know what i mean like comes in every day comes in every day the second they walk in they're in a shitty fucking mood it brings everyone else's mood down they're just fucking miserable with everything they do in their life and at work and then they just have to cause issues for everyone else because they're so fucking bored in their life and that's literally what lankoy is about it's Mm -hmm. it's about me just venting about this fucking person that's why Um, it's so dark and heavy because it's because I just <laughs> everyone fucking hates that person, right? Mm-hmm. Like when you like when you go to work in the morning, like no one wants to fucking go to work. But exactly when you have that person who's there all day bitching about it and complaining and making it more dreary and shitty for everyone else, like it just does not fucking help, and it just puts you in a shit mood. Mm-hmm. It brings your whole mood down too. Oh, for so. sure. It's like okay, yes, I get it. Like like the people walking around. Oh, how about this heat? It's like fuck off. Like just it's like, <laughs> yeah. seriously. Oh, I mean this this chick was way way. Of course, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, no, I uh, I get what you're saying. But yeah, that's that's pretty much what Lanquo is about. To be honest, is it's literally just me venting about uh, working with a shitty person every day. Um, and I hope some people can relate to that, yeah, and I'm definitely. sure most can. <laughs> I mean, I, I know I can for sure. I got a few. So <laughs> yeah, I got a whole list of them. <laughs> yeah, for same. sure. <laughs> That's badass, though. Um, so then, of course, uh, the third song on the list here, which is uh, you mentioned earlier that it's, it's kind of been the song that has kind of sort of almost taken off the most out of all of them when that's uh, end long. So what's uh, what's the deal with that? And were you kind of surprised that like, oh, like you, you said, the Spotify numbers are it's the highest out of all four of them? Yeah. So, I mean, uh, funny enough, I mean. And long was my second favorite off of that, uh, off of the EP. Um, I like the opening riff because it's a little more metalcore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, That's what I dug about. Like second I heard it, I was like, and this is, um, and also like your vocals on this song too. Like there's, yeah. there was one point I literally was like, yo, what the fuck? Like what? I didn't know you could sound like that. Like it was, <laughs> yeah. it was, it was cool. I was like, yo, what? Yeah, all those kind of background vocals. Uh, that was all me. And- voice that i actually had never tried or done before i uh i was kind of just trying something out and i was like cool i like the sound of that Let's, i'll keep it sounds fucking awesome um, it's like it's almost like you're but yeah and long actually was sorry i was just gonna say like it's almost like i mean it's like i'm off, yelling but... at myself yeah yeah and it's like uh, uh, uh like a traditional singer would describe it like they're using their head voice kind of thing and it's like it's very like it's yeah. higher and it's really kinda... raw and like i loved it 
yeah that's that's basically it because uh, Enlong's actually about uh Enlong's actually kind of about uh not kind of it is about uh like drug addiction uh dealing with addiction and struggling with that um yeah it's again i i had a brief period myself where i kind of uh, struggled with addiction and that and this, mm-hmm. this is a long time ago now like long long time ago but uh so that's kind of what i wrote that about because <laughs> again like writing this ep was weird for me lyrically because re- playing in metalcore and like uh kind of hardcore bands and shit all the time uh my lyrics kind of always end up kind of going the same way uh they're usually fucking depressing and usually about a breakup or something you're letting out um, an emotion you're tapping into a mo- emotion and a lot of it's the same when the foundation that you're building onto is like not the same but it's like that very kind of um metal course esque sound for you're sure. gonna have a similar sometimes that that's bound to happen Exactly right. So, like I said, Enlong's kind of about drug addiction. Like you know, the line in there, "The day my world went away." Um, yeah, she's been struggling about addiction. How shitty that can be. How how fucking toxic that can be to your mindset too. Um, once you're deep enough into that, you kind of you kind of fall into this this rut that mm-hmm. you just feel like you can't get out of. Um, but then sometimes also loving that like i have a line in that track too this is like hail the day my world went away um and again you know it's like loving getting into that rut kind of loving the aspect of having that problem and that addiction while simultaneously feeling shitty about it you know? sure yeah 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 the- it's, a, it's a very love-hate relationship when it comes mm-hmm. to addiction so for sure that's that's kind of what that's around and also too, and long musically uh that was actually the first song i finished for the ep oh was, was it like, okay cool yeah that was the first song i fully wrote and and finished well sorry fully wrote for this version of the ep like i said i wrote yeah you songs. wrote a few other ones and yeah and i just deleted them yeah uh but yeah that's badass well again it's definitely a song that is you know a, a definitely a standout you know like it's like when when I, when you told me you were doing something like the the sound that you have on unlong is kind of what I figured it was right. gonna be so then when you again like I said when you came with like the kind of the heavier stuff too I was like oh six so he's gonna go you you kind of show off on the CP what you can do as a whole as a writer yeah. it's not it's not just straight right to the jugular super brutal drag you over the coals heavy stuff it's also like you can have some, like you said, kind of more metalcore esque, I guess, in a way, type stuff, for which sure. is cool because that's as someone who's you know followed you for a, a few years now, like that's how, how I know you. So when I yeah. kind of have it, I'm like, oh, oh, cool. It's almost like a little throwback, which is really cool. <laughs> yeah. I like that. I think that. Plus, with N Long too, like I just uh, out of the entire EP when that when that breakdown hits yeah. uh, after the oh. after the intro riff, that's that's my favorite fucking breakdown smack in the face in the whole ep the day my world went away and then you just get the fucking shot yes. <laughs> second the china hits it's like oh shit uh, full disclosure i was doing the dishes while i was listening to this and i had to put the dish i was drying down what second i hit i was like uh-oh <laughs> this is not good for anybody the second i hear that i was like shit you hit that line i'm like oh, i'm out i gotta go i gotta go mosh i'll be right back <laughs> that's about it and it's always cool like to do the showcases like this is always cool for me. I don't. I haven't done them a lot. This like that's like the second time I've ever done this. But like hearing the, I don't like to speculate a lot on lyrics, right? Just because like, what if I misinterpret it? And yeah, you know, yeah. there's been times where I've misinterpreted lyrics, and it's like you're not even in the same ballpark. It's like, oh shit, sorry. Like, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. music. It's up for debate, and I mean, that's what's great about for music. Sure. So, but it's definitely cool to hear, you know. Um, the stories behind that, but we now come to, of course, the last song on the EP, uh, which is again another banger, full of bangers, man. Deplete <laughs> the deadbeat. Let's... So, de- deplete the deadbeat is kind of uh, it's actually kind of because that was the last song I actually wrote for the EP too. Um, it's kind of a take on uh, just pretty much how our world is fucking right now to be honest or mm-hmm. not right now i guess i'm talking like a couple months ago sure but, yeah uh, now it's a whole different ball game <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly but uh yeah kind of how the world was going right where everything was locked down and it seemed like we were on this insane 
state of government control and, mm-hmm. and and again like not entirely uh you know not really shitting on that because you know this fucking pandemic who could have seen this shit coming and blah 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 that's whatever that's a whole thing we won't get into mm-hmm. but uh just basically the whole the whole mindset of you know it seems like we're at this point of extreme control and and it's also a song you know deplete the deadbeat is is it's kind of about uh just so i'm trying to think of this so the the real like inspiration for that actually came to me the day where they announced that they were coming out with like that uh basically that snitch line for like covid-19 yes yeah 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 when people were like yeah you can call in and like tell us if your fucking neighbors have people over and shit and uh so that's basically where that came from cuz what uh, kind of a deadbeat would just yeah, well exactly there, right oh, and oh you yeah, have i have the line in there about yeah. uh you know when they have us in the streets uh that curb will be the first your teeth meet um which hard <laughs> that's, that's hard you know what i mean just basically saying like you know these people that would be these snitches and shit like that it's like when the chips are down and we're all fucking out there on the street on the same boat like you guys are gonna be the first to get fucked up because because of what you did to people <laughs> and that's the thing is there's been a lot of like and i've said this before here i try not to talk too too much about the covid shit anymore because like everyone's kind of at this point everyone's over here. it yeah. but the one thing i've said before on this podcast a lot is everything that's been going on in the fucking world as much as like shit's crazy right now and has been you know it's shown a lot of people a lot of people have shown their true colors oh 100 like what kind yeah. of person actually like you know oh like like there's members of my family i haven't seen since christmas because of this right yeah. So like let's say I would to go see them. Well, oh, well, we don't want to get in trouble. It's like what kind of fucking loser? I get yeah. it. If listen, if I have twenty people over to my house and we're having a kegger, that's one thing. Like that still, it's yeah. mind your business. But like, yeah, yeah, I would at least understand that. But like, there was people who were like getting in trouble going to see their parents and shit. Like it's yeah. just like what? What kind yeah. of fucking loser would? Oh, this this family had their grandparents over oh this is no good you gotta come and find them or whatever exactly you know what i mean it's it's just it was it was a song about these uh these people that are not helping the situation mm-hmm. when it comes to pushing us towards like kind of that 1984 future like mm-hmm. yeah for sure and it's definitely and i mean it's a it's a statement <laughs> that's that's what i like about <laughs> yeah. it yeah and then obviously if, as well um Having uh, having Nick Young on the track, how how did that come together? Was that another one that you were like, "Hey, I have this idea. I think you'd be great for it." Here's the track, or how did that? Pretty come much, out? yeah. I uh, same thing as Jacob. But, you know, I reached out to him when the track was fully done, and uh, I said same thing. I said, "Here's the track with all of my vocals on it, and then here's a blank track. You go wherever you feel like, go wherever you want." And uh, he just chose that end part. Which was great because he sounds fucking dope on it. Again, perfect place for him for sure. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean. Uh, so yeah, no, it was great. I it was it was so awesome that those guys with Jacob and Nick uh, that they were willing to do it, and obviously with Jake willing to do like all the drum programming mm-hmm. for me was fantastic. Uh, I I cannot thank those three people enough. Um, again, you know, especially for Jacob and. Because, you know, with Jake, like, yeah, he could have programmed the drums, and if it was shit, like, he knew I wouldn't have put it out. Or I'm sure if I sent him the track and it was fucking complete garbage, he'd probably be like, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm not doing this, man. (laughs) (laughs) Man, you uh, suck. I'm not doing this. But when it came to Jake and, uh, or not Jake, sorry, Jacob and uh, Nick, when I reached out to them and showed them, like, they were like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, I'll go on that for sure. And, uh, And that was great. Because originally, actually, I was planning to, uh, I was actually going to have a feature on every track. And uh, it just didn't really end up working out that way. The other two people I kind of reached out to didn't pan out, unfortunately. But yeah. Definitely a cool idea. And I mean, hey, there's no saying that maybe one day that can't happen still with those people or whatever, you know. You never know. It's um, That's what's cool about, yeah, for about sure. the solo 100%. stuff. You I know? mean, like I said, I'm, I'm doing... Yeah, for sure. Like I said, I'm doing this three track uh, EP that'll be out next. I'm hoping I'm not gonna set a release date. Don't for do it, that. I'm Don't hoping do it. it'll. <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be out by uh, 
by the end of the year latest. Cool. Okay, I would hope. Cool, 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 um, cool. But yeah, for that, I mean, it's only three tracks, so I'm probably not going to go feature on every song for it, but uh, definitely one of them, I would think. Uh, I do have somebody in mind who I want to reach out to. Um, but again, we'll see if it pans out that way. Um, unfortunately, it was like, <laughs> it was so fucking stupid. So one of the features I wanted on the first EP uh, that didn't end up panning out, uh, what happened is I reached out to them and they were like, hey, I'm really sorry. Like, I have strap right now. Like, there's no way I can do vocals. And I was like, I totally understand. Uh, but like, I'm trying to get this out quick. So I can't wait. Mm-hmm. And then look what fucking happened. <laughs> fucking so it's it like you probably could have. Like, oh, definitely yeah. could have by this point. Yeah, for sure. Definitely could have. Because uh, like I said, it was like, because in my mind, when I first reached out to them, I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to be putting this out in like three, three weeks a month tops. And that's uh, all. Because it was like, same thing. It was like the last song. Of course. Yeah. There. And, uh, and then, yeah, all that shit happened. <laughs> set me back like hell. And, yeah, four months later, fucking here's the EP. You're probably like, yeah, man, what the hell? <laughs> I could, <laughs> yeah, I probably, probably. So you over the stress though, right now, bro? It's been a few months. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, man. Well, I really appreciate you coming and hanging out and talking about the EP. It was a lot of fun to get to catch up with you and talk about talk about Dragged. Where can the good people find Dragged on social media? Uh, so I'm at Dragged Core on Instagram. And uh, Dragged Faction on Facebook. Uh, I've been trying to post more to f- uh, Instagram lately than anything. It seems to have gotten me a lot more traction than Facebook mm-hmm. was. Um, I feel like Facebook in general is kind of becoming almost, I don't want to say a dead platform because it's not a dead it's platform. It's a platform for old people and businesses. I, I wouldn't even necessarily say <laughs> that. I would say. I'm just uh, trying to trigger people. That's all I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I would more so say it seems like a platform now where it's like you're not uh, you're not reaching like fans and shit like that. Oh, anymore. for like sure. Face- yeah, yeah. Facebook is more just for your friends and family now. And it's like if any of my friends and family listen to drag, which most of them fucking don't. So it doesn't matter. Like, why am I going to spend a ton of time trying to market on Facebook? And then, uh, you know, I started up an in Instagram only like a week ago and uh I'm already at like 85 followers, which is pretty good. Um, and I've just been trying to consistently post like every day on there and stuff. And that's it's definitely one gotten thing. me some. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely gotten me some streaming numbers and shit, which is great. So, well, that's badass, man. It's great to hear, and uh, it's great to talk to you. Everyone will have to for sure keep an eye out for the new stuff from Drag coming uh, hopefully later this year, and we'll have you on again for like the the fifth time, and uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it'll be a great sure. time. <laughs> definitely. All right, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, bro. Hi, guys. There you have it. My chat with Chris. Kind of doing a little dissection on his EP, the EP, from Dragged. Hope that you guys enjoyed the showcase here. That was a lot of fun. I do like doing them like that, where I can have the artist with me to kind of give me the 411 on each song a little bit. Uh, and and it's just, it's just cool. It's cool to do it that way. I like doing it that way. I do it that way every time if I could because I think that's more interesting. To have a set from just, you know, my dumb ass going, oh, I like this riff, you know. Oh, man, this riff totally slaps, bro. <laughs> like I said at the end there. You know, I want that riff in my mouth because it's so tasty. Oh, you know. <laughs> uh, I crack myself up sometimes. And if I've cracked you up and you've enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Leave a rating if you so choose. You know, we're uh, we're getting back up there. I'm very excited. You know, we've had a, we've had a good couple of weeks here on the show with the numbers and all that. And I don't care about that, but it's still nice to see. And of course I need to give a big shout out, uh, before I sign off here to my Patreon supporters, my hotheads, the, uh, the original sponsors of the hotter show in a way, I guess, uh, as well as, uh, you know, of course sponsors of the show, J Bridges, large Kale painting and mean beard. Uh, but my man, will from Rolls Royce, I appreciate your support. My man, thank you so very much. If you guys are into punk, and you have not checked out Rolls Royce, you need to. They are freaking fantastic. Go check them out. R A W L S. I forgot how Rolls were spelled for a second. R A W L S, Royce, R O Y C E. Go check them out. And then, of course, my boy Scott, uh, he is the sole proprietor of Suds Window Cleaning. Now that, uh, you know, summer's starting to wind down, we're going to be getting into the fall months. 
maybe you want to, uh, you know, get uh, get your windows cleaned up before some of the colder weather comes. Maybe you have some a sidewalk you want power washed or your deck power washed or what have you. You know, just because it's going to start maybe getting colder in the next coming months doesn't mean that you can't still be outside and joining your outdoor spaces. And my boy Scott can help you out with that. And as well as, you know, you want to be able to look outside and see all the nice leaves changing. You can't do that if your windows are dirty. So hit up my boy Scott at Suds Window Cleaning and he will hook you up and is a fantastic guy. And Scott, I thank you very much, my friend. Not only for your friendship for a very long time, but also, of course, for your patronage and helping this podcast keep on trucking. And I thank you as well for listening. Thank you so very much. That is so important to have my listeners. You know, I appreciate your audio fist bump. And with that, I'm going to sign off here tonight, and I will catch you next time on The Harder Show. Take it easy, guys.